Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on what time you're watching this. Um, coming at you from our second lockdown, just for context, um, welcome to our Welsh Athletics Autumn series of webinars. Um, thank you all very much for your engagement so far in the series and from the previous series. Um, thank you to the team as always, and thank you to Zoe Brown for, for kind of leading in this space and driving us all forward. Um, run, jump, throw, this is kind of a bit of a um, bespoke personal kind of look at how why I believe run jump throw is important. Um, so you probably get some bits and pieces that you've seen before, but most of it you haven't seen before because it's a lot of it's very much my opinion. So apologies for that. Um, and apologies for the wallpaper as always, the most famous wallpaper of lockdown. Um, right, let's begin. Okay, so the aims, just to explain the benefits of run, jump, throw um, for young people, explain how fundamental movements uh, work within that run, jump, throw, and give examples of activities and activities that help um, athletics that you may not have thought of. Um, give an example of a session um, that you can do, especially in lockdown if you've got no facilities that, um, that I've been doing, because I'm lucky enough to coach for Romney, Romney Valley Athletic Club as well. So um so an example of that and um, just a reminder to parents to coaches to young people um you know how how easily it's all lost if we don't practice okay so the evolution of humans um i quite like this one this obviously we've evolved over over millions of years but certainly in the last tens of thousands um to as as run jump throw um, somewhere in the middle there, we, we developed the ability to, to throw at high speed and we're the only animal to be able to do that. Um, and that sets us apart. And that was thought to be one of the reasons um, for, the, for the sudden growth in the human brain, um, which, which sped up our evolution. Um, because we were able to throw things, we were able to hunt better, so get more protein. Um, and then therefore, um, it's thought that that led to increased brain size and then being able to eventually come up and, and pole vault like that, like that chap there on the end. So um, run, jump, throw has been woven into our, into our evolution as human beings for millions of years. So why wouldn't we, why wouldn't we practice this as often as possible? Why would we neglect that? Because as I say, it's easily lost. Um, so this is almost a bit of a, Bit of a wake-up call to all of us because as a dad I'm, I'm the same thing so and I, I see how much my children play on their own computers and such like so it's, we're just exploring that a little bit um, but our brains and bodies have adapted to, to be able to teach skills as coaches as parents and as as students and and sons daughters um, be able to learn these skills as well so um, that's also part of our evolution and that sets us apart from from other species. So we're lucky enough in, in our sport, in athletics, but um, this, this webinar isn't just for athletics, but um, to have a sport that we can give young people the complete physical skills package. We can teach them everything. We can teach them all movements because all of our movements appear in other sports, um, as we'll see later. But those, those ancient Olympics that started 766 BC, um, we were competing against each other as a human race um, in those run, jump, throw events. And we've carried it on and obviously the, the modern Olympics from 1896 onwards. Um, so we're, we're kind of, as, as, as athletes, as coaches, we're kind of custodians of that lineage, um, of that run, jump, throw lineage that's, that's been throughout our human history. For the last 3,000 years, we've been compete, competing at it. So let alone the last millions okay so our bodies are capable of superhuman performance we shouldn't always necessarily look at the 100 meter th javelin thrower or the 618 pole vaulter as as perfect examples because they're often unicorns but we should be looking at these guys as heroes kip Chogi in the two-hour marathon we, this is what the human body is capable of not, we're not all capable of that but the human race is capable of that because we've evolved to do it so these are the types of role models that we like to see and sport is being 
more and more um, ignored, especially in schools, and especially at this time with, with the pandemic, it's not seen as a priority. Um, so that's why it's important as us as being involved in the sport to, to push this forward. Maybe if children aren't getting that, those experiences in school or at home, then that makes our hour or hour and a half, two hours at the club even more vital, even more important. So this is what we're capable of. Let's not waste this. Why would we waste this um, ability to be able to perform at such a high level? So as I said, as, as human physical movement has, has decreased through, especially at the moment through restrictions, but through the increase in technology, um, decrease in human physical movement, there's no need to move so much anymore. Um, so depression, anxiety, obesity, and, and just general health, it, it's never been so bad. It, it, and it's going to get worse and worse and worse unless we do something about it. So how often, are, how often are our children forced or how often do they need to walk or run or throw or jump or push or pull? Um, as I say, I've got two boys myself, um, eight and 11. And if, um, if it's raining just a little bit, I'll be the first one to say, I'll, I'll take you to school um, if I'm able to, if I'm not at work. But um, should we be doing that? It's, it's too it's too easy it's too we we want to protect our children obviously and but now we're able to kind of wrap a bubble around them almost it's too easy to for the weekend of them that they, they would play their playstation all weekend if, if they wanted to um but it it brings to mind whenever i do that um or whenever they they want to do that brings to, to mind to me and um, the experiment of dr bruce alexander who who did the rat park experiment some of you may be familiar with now, not that I'm comparing my children to rats, but the rats in the experiment were isolated and they were, they were given the cho choice of water or, or a drug, an opioid uh, mixture. And, and when they're on their own in solitary confinement in a cage, um, that's what they chose every time, the opioid, until they just took it and took it and took it until they died. Now, there, were, Dr. Bruce Alexander thought, well, is this because of the drug or is it because of the environment so then he also built a rat park so that was a fun environment where he, the rats could socialize they could play there's lots of things set up for them they could they could do whatever they wanted and then in that situation in that environment um they they ignored the opioid and they, they just had the water because they were able to do what they wanted so again not that i'm comparing my own children to rats um, but it is it is very rat like if we're all on if we're on games all the time. Well, um, but I'm not comparing this to rats. I'm just saying if they if I give them the choice to come and play, if I set up an environment for them where they can go and play with their friends or or play a game or climb or jump or bounce on a trampoline, if they will often come down and ask me to to throw the ball from them on a trampoline, and they would do that all day, diving around the trampoline, catching catching a ball. They would literally do that all day. They much prefer that to the game but if the game is the only choice between that and nothing they're going to choose the game so that's why i'm trying to draw the comparisons to the rap part but so we just sometimes and i'm talking to myself we need to just put a tiny bit of effort in just to create an environment where they that they they can play because they want to Also, in, in the situation we've got to factor in is the role models. When I, when I was growing up, Daley Thompson, Seb Co. there, they were some of my role models. Um, and these days we get some more of the right-hand side. We've got the Kardashians, we've got a couple of gamers there. I won't embarrass myself by trying to figure out who they are or remember. And a couple of pop stars. And so that's why as athletes, as coaches, as parents, um, it's important to remember your role as a role model. We, we kind of take that for granted, but if as a coach, we don't show that we're active and we don't practice what we pe preach or same as a parent, so that's why I've got a picture of parents and a coach there, is a, it's a really important role. We've got role models as role models at the moment because um, with sport being less on the television now, Diamond League has been cut down right back to the bare bones. It's hardly on. I used to watch athletics as often as possible on the BBC, but now... 
Um, a lot of the athletics coverage is, is just talking. It's not much action. Um, it's very few and far between. Um, so even more important now than ever is our, is our role as role models, as parents and as coaches. Sorry, I'm moving my notes. Okay, with, with all the things mentioned, this it could almost lead, it's not quite this dramatic, but it could almost lead to this rapid onset devolution of the human movement. Um, it's, we see if we stop practicing anything, the body will atrophy, it, it will lose the ability to do that, it, brain and body. So if we don't practice these skills and these movements, um, the body will think there's no need for them. So they're kind of, we'll, they'll be lost potentially forever. So, and I, this diagram, I also think of this as if we go too far towards a certain event. So if say we just do endurance running, I also think part of the brain, part of the body in young people um, will just atrophy. They'll lose the ability to be able to learn skills and lose some of the important ability um, that, we, that we need to be able to become a successful human being or, or, a, or an optimal human being or try and become a more healthy, better posture, that type of thing. That's the type of thing that we, we'll lose if we concentrate on just one event or one um, aspect of any sport. So here's some, of the, some pictures of what we've talked about so far. So we've evolved to be able to kind of sit and squat in that deep squat position. Um, some pictures of some obviously highly historically, historically accurate pictures of um, some other cavemen throwing and rotating and jumping, um, that type of thing. And then pictures of kids doing what they want to do. Kids want to play. Kids want to, um, when, when they play, they'll, they'll get into that deep squat position um, or, the, or they'll throw something, they'll jump, they'll, they'll socialise. That's what they want to do. Um, all of these movements, these um, you know, movements that, that we've learned through history and, and we're kind of forgetting how to, how to perform them. You can't make a model without the correct pieces. So each sport, each event has a series of movements that fit together to form the sport. So if we just practice the sport without properly learning those movements, it's likely that there'll be a weak link in that chain somewhere. So it's fine if we want to just practice the event, if we want to just practice endurance running or throwing the javelin or the shot or high jump, if we can just practice that event, as long as in parallel, we've got the, the ABCs, the, the fundamental movements, um, the movements that actually make up this model. Otherwise, the model is likely to be, as it says there, without this, there'll be poor performance, there'll be weak links in the chain. So weak links will break. They'll, it can't last forever. We see it in young athletes that become successful for their age because probably because of their stage of maturity. And so they will, for example, long jump. You look back in the power of 10, they'll go right long jump 20 competitions a year for three years, um, followed by broken bones, um, followed by two or three years out of sport, possibly come back, possibly don't. I see it very often. In, in athletics. So it's important to get those movements right. Success at that level isn't important. Um, doesn't make you a good long jumper because you're better than everybody else. What makes you a good long jumper is your technique and how robust you are. If your mechanics are safe, if, if your movement is fluent, if you can perform safely, not jump further than your peers. Okay, so our coaching responsibilities. So the first thing we should do as coaches is restore that human movement through ABCs, games, drills, fundamentals. So whatever age an athlete comes to you, we should restore this human movement. We look at that nice deep squat position that the, the caveman had and the baby had. Um, that type of movement, we should be looking to restore that before we start practicing the event. We need these movements to fit into place first. Um, and some of these movements are then precursors to later on. So jumping and throwing um, movements are precursors to weightlifting, for example. So if sometimes in Olympic weightlifting, we'll cue 
jumping off the floor with the weight, even though in effect, as they get better, we change that cue, but jumping off the floor, and that's a lot easier to do if the athlete can already jump. So if they come to me at 18 and start trying to learn weightlifting, and they, they haven't had a kind of a run jump throw background, that makes my job as a strength coach or as a, any coach a lot more difficult because you've got to actually learn to jump properly. Um, and the same thing, that happens a lot. I see that quite a lot. So these run, jump, throw movements are vital to the, to the rest of sport. But how can we jump if you can't get in a safe squat position? We can't do that either because if our knees go in when we squat, then that's going to happen when we jump. And then when we land, our knees are going to cave in, therefore going to um, put load onto unsafe, weak positions, and therefore there's going to be a break. So we've got to learn right from the start to restore that human movement. Then we build on it with athletic movement. So we go more deliberate play. So we get slightly more a pull throw or a more push throw action. Um, if we're throwing or slightly more specific jump actions. But again, this should form the, the biggest part of the training then. And then just a bit, just a small part, top of the pyramid, even though it's at the bottom of the page. I've planned that well. Then we build in the event specific movement. And now it's okay if you have got a running track and some equipment, it's okay to do a bit of that because children will come to the club and, and want to do that. So that's fine, as I say, but as long as in parallel, we're restoring this human movement um, and we're building these athletic movements more generally through run, jump, throw activities. Um, and one thing I forgot to mention there, we need to restore this human movement because when we're sitting watching the telly, we don't sit in that deep squat position anymore. We don't sit on the floor with our legs folded, perfect posture. We sit, we slouch on the, coat, on the couch, don't we? So as I say, if we don't practice the movement, it disappears. So we'll, we get athletes to come to us that just haven't got in these positions, whether for mobility or just you know general stiffness, mobility around the joints, muscle tightness. Um, so there's all sorts of reasons why we haven't got this human movement anymore. So that's what we need to work to restore. So a little bit on de deliberate play. This is, um, feel free to go and check out the physical literacy webinar that um, Hannah Pretty did with myself. And we, we talk about this a bit more, but this is the type of thing we, we need to be doing in our training sessions. We need to be deliberately playing. So, and then add specificity later. So we shouldn't be throwing equipment. We shouldn't be necessarily jumping onto a high jump bed before we can you know, jump from A to B and land in, with soft knees in a safe position, or before we can you know, throw two, two hands overhead with a football. We shouldn't be stressing the joints, giving it actual equipment. We shouldn't be looking at that 100 meter javelin throw and taking that as that's what we're trying to go. We should be winding that right back and just, just looking at a simple pull throw movement before we go, before we jump to that, as I said earlier. So um, it always comes before deliberate practice. It's less intense, and so we can do it more often. We can do more of it. It's more fun, so it's more inclusive. We learn off each other, so the coach doesn't have to keep talking, um, and it can be differentiated, so everyone can join in, and it's, it's a much more... Um, friendly learning environment therefore we're going to get more athletes coming back if we do this deliberate play this guided discovery type session so are we missing the point with these um, in athletics are we always aiming for that 100 meter javelin throw that two hour marathon because if we are we're ignoring statistics and we're just looking at our egos we're um, what athletics should be about at this level is providing athletes with skills for life. It's not about performance. It's not about how good you are at the under 15s, because that is a um, a long time to be telling that story for our under 15 champion when you're 21 and you've dropped out of the sport because you didn't have the robustness through the run, jump, throw, through the ABCs. Um, you don't want to be that person telling that story. You want to still be active at 21, 31, 41, 51, 61. So I've chosen different sports there. We should be able to change, should be building our athletes to be able to change events if they want to, change sports if they want to. I know we want to keep them in the sport. But if we create a bigger base of really fit, robust athletes that move really well, 
then fine, we can lose some to rugby, to, to football. Um, we can lose some to Bob Slay, as recently. Um, but that's fine because our pool is bigger. So we're still going to have a bigger, better sport. So we shouldn't be selfish. We should be building athletes. As I said, we've got the opportunity as a sport, one of the only sports, to be able to give these children a, a complete skills package. So no other sport has that. So they should be able to set them up for life in these movements. So even if they drop out after university, which a lot will, they'll still be able to, if someone asks them if they want a game of football in the park, they can't say, oh, no, I can't run. You know, oh, no, oh, no, I used to run when I was younger. I got bad, I got a really bad shoulder. I used to throw javelin. I can't, I can't come and play rugby. Um, I can't do, as a picture, I can't do the London Marathon. You know, if, if we give these people the skills, then they should be able to play any sport always through their life, which it says that it helps athlete retention. It's going to help physical and mental well-being if they've got all the skills. And th right throughout life, it increases your social network. So it's a much better place to be if you can go and have a game of golf. Oh, I'm not very good, but I've got skills, so how hard can it be? And so you, you can then learn other sports on top later on in life if you've been through, and I'll show you a little a bit on when it's important to lose skills in a minute. But um, if we learn all these skills when we're younger, we can just call on them whenever we want. The, the tennis is basically a throw, isn't it? As we serve, and then it's a pull and a push, um, and it's a, a lunge and a squat. It, the golfer there is squatting, and then it's some rotation. But if we've learned all this, the golf movement is very similar to um, a, a throw movement. We try and create some sort of separation between the lower and the upper body, and it's all on timing. So. Uh, we've got we've got Shane Williams doing some hurdles there, hurdling the player. We've got a Welsh netball player kind of jumping, catching, pushing, uh, lunging. So all of these movements we could have, we can teach athletes to set them up for life. Um, and then when we're older, one of the I haven't got the reference. Sorry, I will put it in the notes. Maybe um, grip strength is one of the most important. Well, not the most important. Grip strength is a very good um, indicator of mortality. So the stronger your grip strength is through all different kind of exercise, the longer you're gonna live. Um, that's what the indications are. And the same with leg strength is also an indicator. So in some populations, leg strength is basically important to, to how long you live for obvious reasons, getting up and down the stairs and so on. So. Um, that's why it's so important for life, not just for that elite athletics, we should be thinking big picture. And then we'll still get the elite athletes and we'll still get more of the elite athletes because the elite athletes will have more skills. Okay, so a, a bit of a session we've been doing in lockdown from Romney Valley, we've got no track, we've got no, um, we haven't got enough equipment to be able to share, you know, 12 shots or 12, you know, throwing things or, so this is a bit of a, a fun thing we, we dreamt up. We haven't, we haven't got a chat, we haven't got a, a sports hall we were using has not reopened yet. So this is the type of thing we do just to give you an idea. But this is something you do as parents as, uh, or as, as sports leaders, anything you want. Um, this would be good pre-season for rugby, netball, that type of thing. But it's only very simple. Um, and a lot of you would be doing the same thing, but it's just to give you a, a bit of an example. But we still managed to have the goals, even though we we haven't got any equipment and stuff. You can still set your little smart goals at the start of the session in terms of what you're going to do and in terms of how you're going to do it. So our what two goals were um, travel the whole full two mile loop because that's what we did. We based it on a two mile loop, or probably about a mile and a half. Um, we had a jump goal, so we're going to jump over different obstacles at different heights using both legs. And we've got throws goals. So we're going to experience a range of throws movements all on all within this one session. Um, equipment, obviously different these days. First aid kit, water, um, some wipes and our, and our COVID kit, which is, you know, you can't go without it these days. So basically what we did, went on a big loop of a kind of a local area, um, taking in all sorts of different landscapes. So we were able to include lots of different things, obviously risk assessed before. So don't worry, Chris Moss, development team I was on it risk assessment so obviously risk assessed especially if you're dealing with young people um, in day like this one so it'd be a good one to do at the weekend now as a, as a night to join in but it's just we we 
ran a route and we stopped along the way to do different bits and pieces basically so we ran this big loop so it started off it says there i won't go too much into detail i can send you this these slides if anyone wants them but just made our way to the first checkpoint which was a little bridge is about 400 meters away on the way we did some skipping some high knees some arm circles um, then when we got to the bridge we did some high knee walk some lunge walk some, some started doing some skipping movements um, the coaching points we had, we had a coach at the front and the coach at the back for most of this so uh, and then we did some sprint, sprints up this long long section of the bridge about 100 meters and there's a quick way down you can just come down the steps and then repeat times three so we've got a bit of anaerobic work we've already done a bit of aerobic work um, then we jogged along the route or walked up to the athletes um, to a bike track which is just a big loop um, so we did three laps of the bike track about 200 meters but concentrating on pace judgment. So every lap needed to be about the same pace. So it wasn't too, too much exertion. Um, and then we moved on. So we, we jogged down to the next clearing where one of the other coaches has gone on and set up a circuit. So we did a bit of a, a fundamental movement circuit, did some high knees, some squat jumps, press ups, jumping jacks, squat thrusts. And we did th that three times round. And we, we jogged on. Um, towards the next hill but there's a curve at the bottom so we did some step ups both legs i'll move i'll change pages um we did some jump ups we did some jump ups backwards as well so very low curve but it was just great for coordination because it's quite hard to coordinate especially if you're trying to do it quickly um, but it's a safe environment nowhere near the road or anything but there was a little curve um, so um then we moved on did one long hill sprint then made our way back through this wooded area where I'd already been because I'd risk assessed it. So there was some fallen trees and I, I put some other just branches on the floor. So as the athletes walked or jogged or sprinted along um, that section, they, they jumped and we encouraged them to jump off both legs. So um, they jumped left, jump right, climbed over, jump left, jump right, jog. Um, and we, we finished up at the, at the riverbank. So again, risk assessed, don't worry. Um, they, we stood two metres back from the riverbank and it's kind of a bit of an oxbow, so they're all facing outwards. I numbered them one and two, one's through and then two's through. And we just let them throw rocks into the river to start with. And then we added the biggest splash competition and then encouraged them to use a range of different throws so that the, for the biggest splash, they need to pick up a fairly heavy object. So they're you know, throwing some of those in and then we did an accuracy test. So we got them to pick a spot on the other side of the bank which wasn't far away so you didn't need to throw it too hard but um, it was more of a, a pull throw action instead of maybe they'd be doing a push throw or a heave throw with a heavy rock it was a pull throw so we've got lots of different um, activity there so um, then to finish with we just jogged the last bit all together as a group um, to me as a park course but as a big group um, and then did a bit of stretching a bit of recap afterwards and we asked them what their favorite part of it was uh, and any any top tips for throwing anything that they were thinking of that was making the 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 implement the rock go higher in the air or more accurate so we asked them that as well so within that session it's an hour we've, we've got some aerobic work we've got some anaerobic work we've done run jump throw and hopefully we've had a good time so um again i don't, I don't want to teach you to suck eggs a lot of you that's the type of thing you, you do but that was just an example of what we've been doing in um in our sessions so there we go there's a picture of some of it the wooded trail there then the, the bridge route a little exercise area where we stopped to do our circuit and so on but everyone enjoyed himself here we go I forgot about this one this is night demonstrating a fairly decent so fairly decent squat position he wasn't instructed to do this we were just filming and having fun But Nye is a, a, a good javelin thrower, a good all-rounder, and also loves rugby. Um, you know, always encouraged to do all sports. And I, great cricketer. And a good lad. Right, thank you for that, Nye. And some other sports that help athletics development that you might not have thought of, but I always think they're, they're great. Squash and badminton, because we get that throwing motion, we get the timing motion of timing when to hit something is the same as trying to time when to hit a javelin or a discus. Um, netball and 
Basketball, for kind of obvious reasons, it, it's jumping, it's running, it's lunging, it's pushing, pulling, um, rotating, bad, you know, badminton in, with the lunging as well. Um, swimming is good because there's no load and it's good for um, cardiovascular development. So along with all the, the kind of the general sports, these are quite good sports to, to include in, maybe you can include some of that in the warm up, not the swimming obviously, but, um, and with equipment, maybe not with that, but with not badminton or squash, but certainly netball, basketball are great in the warm up. You might have to differentiate the games so that the, the most dominant don't just take over, but um, they're always great, great things to play in, in the warm up. Um, and something else I was going to mention, when when I used to train back uh, with my dad, who was my coach then, we had a multi-events group, and a lot of that group, um, we, we were together for a number of years, and I obviously went on to become an international athlete, but that group, um, if you look back now, what they're doing now, we've got, um, out of that group came an elite kick kickboxer, a runner, uh, a couple of people who did the Ironman, a cyclist, a, a Great Britain dragon boat racer, um, out in Hong Kong, competes for Great Britain, um, an elite rugby player, fitness instructor, footballer. So out of our mentality we had back then, which is where this all comes from, is from my dad, is, is that run, jump, throw. It's don't think too much about the um, competition. Think about growing as a human being, as socially and through deliberate play, experimenting with your body, making up, we used to make up different walks that we would do to increase mobility, help coordination and balance. So, and out of that, when you eventually go your separate ways, you've got all those different sports that we've kind of helped build a foundation for. Any one of those, if you put a set of hurdles out in front of them right now, they'd be able to jump them. Uh, they'd be able to run and jump, you know, without, without a second thought, because that's what we did. We, we played and we became successful sports people. And then we kind of later on, we specialized in what, where we specialized in. But, and there was an, another few good athletes came out of that group as well. So as I say, if you grow your base, you're going to get more athletes, even though you will still lose people, you will, will kind of retain people as human beings and they will all, they're still in contact now with, with my dad. Um, and always appreciative of the time they had back then. So imagine having that as a coach, um, a group of people who later in life still kind of are appreciative of what you've done for them. Um, I said I'd show you this slide, skill hungry years. So this is the, the best time to learn skills when we're, when we're younger. Um, but as I say, if you check out our physical literacy webinar, we, we kind of delve into this, but I thought this was quite relevant as to when we we retain those skills for later in life. Again, if you don't hit these windows, it's not too late, but it's just, um, there's evidence that shows these are the, you really hold on to the gains that you make within these windows. Puberty very, plays a factor in, in there. And a slide we've used in a number of webinars as well is this kind of athlete development model. So we won't linger on, linger on this too long. Um, but as you can see, Sports focus, if we look kind of just above halfway, sports focus, multi-activity, multi-event, um, way before we specialise. Okay, and this is just a quote that explains if we don't lose it, if we don't use it, we lose it. So the moment we stop jumping, running, throwing, um, we lose it. And it, it, it kind of, a little bit of me dies inside when I hear someone, an adult or a child, but an adult say, oh, I can't run. Oh, I can't, I can't, I can't throw. Um, or either because they just can't or they don't think they can, or they, they can't because of injury, because of um, pushing too hard when they're younger. So I just thought that was a nice little quote. Further support and reading, um, everything has come so far from Welsh Athletics. We've got some nice little plyometrics um, videos and different relay videos, ideas, but um, please give me a shout, anything you need. Um, usual email address, I've left it off there for some reason, finn.corcoran at welshathletics.org, but most of you know where I am. Um, thank you all for watching. I hope um, 
lockdown isn't too bad for you. It's as bad for me as everybody else. Please stick with it. Um, as I say, if you want any training ideas, give me a shout. Um, we do a few Zoom sessions at the moment um, and a few kind of, as long as you live in the local borough, we do a few hill sessions and stuff. But there's, there's hopefully more activity coming your way very soon. Um, we're in uh, start of October now for reference. So hopefully by the time you've watched this, we've survived. Okay. Thank you very much.